All right, let's see if we can get on Facebook. Let's try it. No, but shh. Right on the set. All right. Got it. Let's record this for prosperity. Uh, something like that, right? Hey, we're on Facebook. It looks like it anyways. Oh, girl. All right. Um, well, it looks like it it's anyway. Wednesday, so it must be Whiskey Wednesday. And Joining a very eight. special dram party. Welcome yes. to all uh, the people that showed up tonight. Despite the nor'easter, some wind, some rain. Yeah. Perfect temperature outside to be drinking whiskey indoors, especially in the bunker down here. It The weather is always perfect in a liquor store. Yes. Joining me on the dais today is the one, the only, the spirits meet himself to the gods, Randall J. Bird. That's right. And on my right is soon-to-be birthday boy, Ryan Maloney. So if you remember this on Friday, his actual birthday, you That's can right. uh, wish him some happy birthday wishes. So Yes. Yeah. Thank you. And what do we do on our birthdays, Randall? We share Drink whiskey. Yes, yes, exactly. And share our whiskey. And try and forget. And try, try, try. Um, it's now a dram party with science. That's right. So um, is everybody ready to try some whiskey tonight? Yes? All right. The so, lineup is pretty special. Yeah. I mean, it's not your typical, going to be your typical Whiskey Wednesday. A lot of these things, um, you may have never, you may be the first people to taste some of it because it's not yeah. been released yet, as well as some very rare or special stuff that we've pulled aside for the tasting tonight. But let's get right into it. You should have the trays numbered or lined up, hopefully sequentially, and hopefully you still have eight glasses with liquid in them. <laughs> but I know this crowd that we're dealing with, and that could already be... Listen, I'm not going to tell you to go back and forth, so do, do uh, imbibe at your own pace. pleasure. Yes. Yes. All right, so um, we're going to start off the night with um a new riff and we did i picked this new riff to do tonight because new riff has always been known for their rise they're very sought after for rye whiskey and randall and i i mean they're they're right at the border of of uh of of kentucky and uh i mean they're cincinnati ohio 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 and as a matter of fact we 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 you have to basically cross into ohio and then come back into Kentucky to to get to the distillery, really but, but interesting. But for those folks who have not been to Louisville, Louisville is fairly close to the yeah, Ohio it border, it so it's not like that crazy. About a, I would say, what was it? About an hour. Yeah, about fantastic hour. distillery experience. Yeah. And you name this one the one, the first one we're starting out number one. Number one is called one one one. So. And it was bottled in April, uh, which is my birthday month, one uh, one two thousand nineteen, and it was bottled in August uh, twenty twenty three. So um, I'm going to let you guys, I'm going to let you try this and see what you think. Um, this was aged at least four years, as you can tell, because of the, the dates that I gave you. But that's their sort of, their sort of uh, fame on it, like four, four years, although they're coming out with an eight. Eight is coming out soon, I guess. Um, you can have a little bit, a little bit left. That's a whole card if anybody's looking for one. But the thing, the, the thing about this was uh, Randall and I went down there. Uh, we were trying you know, they send a bunch of whiskeys out for us, and um, we had the we had the crew from uh, Fireflies with us. Great, great guys. We've been uh, sharing barrels and doing some great projects with them. And so we sat down and and we had a bunch of samples in front of us and stuff. And they started hemming and hawing about which one they were going to get, like which one was the best, which was the best. And Randall and I look at each other and goes. And I, and I look at him and he looks at me and I go, we already know which one we're getting. And I said to them, you can buy whichever one you want, but we're buying one. And this is what the one in front of you right now. The one. Yeah. The one. Um, a lot of times we'll try and name stuff. That, so it's a mnemonic so we can remember it. Because if you can remember far enough back in the whole uh, single barrel process, you would see a huge serial number that would be attached to each barrel, I'll tell you which right was now. impossible to remember. And so we came up with a naming mechanism so that we could help remember some of these at a later point and just be like, oh, that was the one at New Riff. And um, another yep. kind of backstory as we're talking a little bit about this is that people will come with us to pick and they get very excited. There's a lot of talking and stuff going on and debate and questions. But uh, Ryan and I's 
eyes are kind of tasting profiles. And so we can generally uh, do it without a whole lot of conversation, Verbal. which a lot of Engagement. people seem to get annoyed at because they want to hear like how we're tasting and what the our process. tasting notes are. But it's basically like we want to pick the best one. And that's what we're always looking for in this. So, I mean, the barrel number is 18641. And so I'd have people come up and go, hey, remember barrel number 18641? And I'd be like, no, I don't. So just so you guys know, this past year, 2023, we did about 100 barrels and projects. So, to, you know, just even remembering one year to the next year can be a little daunting. This is at 114.5 for those keeping uh, track at home. Um, just about everything you're going to try tonight is at cast strength, whatever that cast strength would be. Um so uh, <laughs> also taste accordingly. You all have water. Um, so if you want to bring these down a little bit or do the Randall Bird method, and everybody knows what that is, drink some water. Bring these down a little bit or do the Randall Bird method. Then drink your whiskey. Swallow. And then you've coated your palate with the small coating of water. And that way you're not adding water to your whiskey, so you're Sample. diluting it. But instead, you're adding water to your palate with the whiskey, which will open up a lot of the flavor and aroma as well. But instead, right. you're adding um, your palate. All right. So that is New Riff number one on an old tradition. Number one. One. Yeah. So, right, so that um, what do you guys think? Number one. On an old right. Tradition, number one. So the actually the owner was just here for Go Whiskey Week. Uh, not for Go Whiskey Week. He was actually here for um, Whiskey Roadshow, uh, Jay. And he was going he was like, you know, I, I try all my whiskey all the time. He goes, the, 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 the bourbon you guys pick? He was going, he was like, not one of my favorites. Um, and he said the same thing. Everybody wants that rise, but that bourbon is just that, the, especially when you pick, is off off the charts. And one of the first ones they were releasing as a bourbon that people were going in to buy. Yeah. So now we got um, guess on the in floor on that one, one on the, the ground floor. They were releasing yeah. as a bourbon All right. So the next one is a, it's been a sleeper. We're almost out. We got about like well about three cases of this left. Um, this is old line. Number two, um, this one doesn't really have a name because it was the only lock and key one that we've done from them. So it is an American single malt whiskey, um, barrel number 16-1169. There'll be a quiz later. Um, the mash bill on this is 90% 90, 90 premium two-row malted barley, 10% uh, deep roasted malt barley. Uh, it's a column to pot still, the distillation. It's done in a virgin American white oak, char number four, 53 gallon. Age and climate, mid Atlantic, seven summers, seven winters. The fill date was 12 18, 2016. The, the harvest date, though, was uh, 2023. Uh, the fill proof, the fill proof was 119.4, and it harvest proof is 125.5. So this is a 125.5. Proof on this one, and this I think you're going to start seeing a lot more um, American single malts. Some of the big players are getting now involved, and some of them are really good, and some of them are not as good as others. But um, a lot more people are entering this sort of category, so I think we're going to see a lot of um, a lot of variations across the board, and you're going to see a lot of uh, good and bad come out of it. I think until everything sort of shakes out. And a malt whiskey, of course, is barley, so. One of the spicier grains that you can get has tends to be, in many of the whiskey experts' opinions, one of the most flavorful or spice nuances that you can yeah. get in whiskey. Then just behind that is rye whiskeys, followed by, um, of course, bourbon and wheat whiskeys as categories. But um, what was really interesting to me, tasting these side by side, is that both of these, being products of an American uh, distillation process and for labeling, are using a virgin charred barrel, yeah. and this is char level four. I don't know if we know the deep cut dive information on I don't have the new that riff, riff, but I'm going to guess it's fairly similar because even though you're getting a difference in the flavor or the taste, to me, the wood spice on both of these tastes very similar. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing the influence of the barrel that if you could remove that, you would then see behind it the influence of the grain in the flavor or the taste of it because... As most people know, this goes into the barrels clear, like vodka, and so uh, up to 60, 70% of your flavor and all of the color 
is coming out of that barrel. So similar barrels, different contents in the barrel, that barrel is going to yield the same types of flavor elements into each of those. I really like this one. At the price point this is at, this is like sort of sitting on the shelf. It's it's one of those type of things that it's a it's a surprise to most people once they they start diving into it. What do you guys think? You like it? It's a it's yeah, and, and a lot of you guys sort of into now single malt American single malts. Like it? Yeah. Yeah. And, and Just you, sir. You okay, good. Yeah. No, it doesn't drink. I, I mean, you there is uh, um how I like to say it. It, it, it warms it warms it warms the uh, warms the fire, but doesn't choke the chimney. You get that nice warm feeling, but it's not the 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 alcohol is not really aggressive. I think it rolls really, really well. Some like people enjoy it. choking the chip. Yeah, I know, but we're not going to get into that, Randall. Okay. Anyway, um, your personal preference because we're out of the story here. Like, yeah. we're going to keep rolling through these whiskeys, but please, if you have a question or yeah. like a clarifying point, raise your hand. We'll we'll uh, try and get to you before we get too far away from the whiskeys. And we didn't really ask after the one, but were there any questions or comments that people had about New Riff One? Before we move on to the next. Okay. And I didn't realize Thank we you. did new riff and then old line. Yeah. That's the progression of age. Yeah, right? I know. And exactly. One is a exactly. few years and yeah. the other one's seven. Years. Seven years. Yeah. Um, That's the progression. I, 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 I really, this was like a, this was even a shocker to me when we started doing the old line, when we started getting the samples for this. And they sent us a lot of samples. Um, they were all really, this one I thought was exceptionally good. Obviously, that's why we bought it. But um we were just trying to figure out how we were going to, how were we going to educate everybody on this? Because a lot of the stuff, when we bring stuff in that's like not exactly mainstream yet, we have to all also understand that we're going to have to educate people as we go along. Liquid to lips is an easy way of doing that. This is why we have try before you buy here. This is why we do those type of things and have a bottle open so you can try it. So there's no, it takes the guesswork out if you don't like it. You just move on to the next one. We have something, you know, we have something for everybody in our lineup. But the the thing is to always keep the quality level and whatever it, it has to be, it has to be of 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 good quality and a good example of what we're trying to show you. Right. So I think it surprises people that we actually turn away a lot of products if we don't feel that the standard is there. Over three times as many as we uh, take. Yeah. So, um, and that's because I think that three times as many as we we look for a good value, good flavor. Some of these stuff it can get a little bit pricey. Yeah. For my wallet or whatever, but we want to make sure that if you go home or you're sharing this or you have a chance to taste it, that it will always deliver on flavor and not be a disappointment. I'm going to so give you the sale. forward to the next thing. Yeah, I'm going to actually yeah. give you the sale prices afterwards, but I'm just going to give you sort of. The, the general thing. So, uh, one is sixty dollars. Um, old line is uh, old line is uh, fifty five dollars. So that's fifty five bucks. Yeah. So I mean, just to show you sort of the, you know, what what these things go for and, and how we try to work work stuff in and uh, and we'll, we'll run a gamut tonight. Okay, we will run a gamut tonight. Well, the next the next product is something that we didn't necessarily uh, pick. Yeah, this was this was interesting. So, um, John, where's Johnny? Hi, Johnny. Uh, John, Randall, and I have started doing. Um, we've only we're only two in right now, right? We're only two in. We're starting to do a video that we call Three Men in a Bottle," and uh, so it's just sort of a way for us to start um, tasting things and uh, like sort of presenting them to to everybody. So one of the the, the first one we did was was uh, Heaven's Door. Um, right. This is the first one. That was yep. the first one we did. And if you really want to see something disturbing, uh, John likes to wrap it in the swaddling baby cloth and hold it and rock it. But that's all on the Facebook. Yeah, he's sort of taking so. this whole thing as three men and a baby as three men in a bottle and right. taking it to the nth degree and has actually bought swaddling clothes for the for, for our bottles. Yeah, it's a little weird. So this is Heaven's Door, which, uh, as you know, uh, may know, is the Bob Dylan brand. But this is a very special edition of something that he's come out with, and it includes an actual copy of the um, yeah, songwriting lyrical of, notes yeah. that the are on the uh, hotel stationery that he apparently kept um, from uh, back when he wrote the song. 
And I believe he was going to call in tonight to the show. Is that? Do you want me to try that? Yeah. I'll, I'll see if I have it. Okay. Is he there? I don't know if he's there. I think he is. Hold on. Let's try. Hello, friends, and welcome back. I'm your host, Bob Dylan. Recently, I met some distillers and blenders, and together we cooked up our own brand of Tennessee bourbon, double barrel, and straight rye whiskey. Maybe you've read about it. It's called Heaven's Door. That's the most coherent Bob Dylan's ever been. Today to shop by Dylan's award-winning whiskey. That's heavensdoor.com. All right. Oh, so, uh, but that's this that's the most he's been here and I've ever right. heard him speak in my entire life. And right after you heard that kind of introduction or whatever, which is for his regular kind of yeah. output, this particular one, um, we had some great notes put together by John again on this, but sourced from a distillery in Minnesota. In Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, and it's a weeded, we, it's a weeded, uh, bur- weeded bourbon um, from Minnesota, about a hundred and something miles from his house. It's a weeded. Uh, um, weeded bourbon, um, seven-year-old. So, and the the makeup is uh seventy percent corn, thirty percent uh wheat. So, and the the makeup is uh, yeah, and it's all locally sourced. All locally sourced. So, one hundred and twenty-two point seven proof. A limited edition project that he did with uh, not his typical sourcing distilleries or at his distillery, but kind of uh talking back to his roots. And it comes with an interesting set of liner notes. So if you're a big Bob Dylan fan or a fan of his lyrics and know somebody who might want a nice gift that is also a Bob Dylan fan, I think that that's where the value of this particular whiskey is. But let's give it a little taste. Yeah, try it, though. See if you enjoy it. I mean, number three, the Heaven's Door weeded at how old? Yeah, try it. This is seven years old. Seven years. It's a seven year old. I got to tell you, I. When, when we when we tasted this and the and the premise of us three men in a bottle is we take two sips and then give you what, how we feel about it. first sip is all of you guys know don't trust your first sip trust your second sip okay get acclimated with the whiskey first don't judge it on that take your second sip is where you should go then you can explore it after that but you always just get the whiskey in your mouth first and then move on i i think this is fantastic I mean, this is why I made the cut tonight. I, I really think that it's, you know, for something out there that you can, it's still like red, fairly readily available. Yeah. Um, this is uh, like ninety dollars for seven year old weeded weeded bourbon. This is with a nice little packaging and and kind of that at thing cast, I, at cast strength. I at mean, some this point, is I worry that, good. that stuff gets gimmicky. But then, as we go yeah. into the next two uh, whiskeys. We're You'll gonna really we're gonna take gimmicky, gimmicky is, is so, yeah. but 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 gimmicky in a good way. What do you guys think of the, what do you guys think of the of the Heaven Store? But gimmicky in a good way. I think it's I think it's really good. I, I yeah. like. We were talking about what we were gonna put in the lineup tonight and how it was gonna be and what we were choosing and stuff like that. And I was like, man, I don't think enough people have had this, and it's so it's off the regular base of what they're doing. That I said, you know what? We we have a almost a full bottle of it. We gotta I think we should do this one. All right. That I said, you know what? I like this one a lot. Yeah, I know. Well now we don't have a bottle of this anymore. Y'all y'all drank it all. It's okay. Yeah. That's what whiskey's for. It's for drinking. Okay, so now these the so these three first three are all available. You can get them. Okay. The next two are not available yet. Okay. Hulk, yes. It would. I would. I would. I would suggest that you do put a whole card in for these because they're. They're quite. They're quite good and they're quite different. So the first one that we're gonna do, and I'll I'll let Randall go through go through this, but the but the first one we're gonna do is, um, called French Kiss. And you want to explain this one, Randall? Sure. Um, a French kiss is when you use tongue. <laughs> what do you? Oh, something you never had. No. <laughs> I have a girlfriend in Canada. You would yeah, know. Yeah, her. yeah, she's a model yeah. in Canada. But listen, um, we wanted to do something. Um, as many folks know, that I'm in a kind of transitional period away from Copper and Cask, where that was kind of the brand that I was building a lot of the flavors and profiles for. And so we wanted to do a couple uh, projects as I exited, and one of them was to take a 45 percent uh, wheat and one of bourbon that I kind of had in the back of the warehouse keeping my eye on it and folks weren't really purchasing that barrel for sale which I thought was pretty amazing and we put that 
into an Armagnac cask, first use Armagnac cask. And from this came roughly 20 cases of this product. So the French Kiss is the Armagnac, which is a French product, has kissed the flavor of this weeded uh, bourbon. We just wanted it to be just show. We just wanted to show the Armagnac. We didn't want it to take over. Right. But in my estimation, the weeded bourbon alone was fantastic without it. And so I will always say that if you're trying to put finishes or additional flavor into something, you cannot do it to try and hide a flaw. It'll only accentuate if there's a problem. But if you have something that's a fantastic whiskey underneath, it only elevates that even beyond what that is. So for you to decide, I mean, that's me and my opinion of this, but the French Kiss Copper and Cask to be released probably uh, end of April. And yeah, and it probably will not hit the shelves. So if you're interested in this particular product, um, I think that there's some mechanisms that you can kind of put that on hold. Yeah, so or do, it, do it as a, um, if you want to do it as a, um, um, as a whole card, do that. It's French Kiss. This is seven years old. This is 62.7. So it's not for the faint of heart. It is really nice. Um, it's uh, so these, this is done. It will not have April. a paper label. Yeah, this is just it. this is this just, is just the mockups. Yeah, this it'll look different yeah. than this. Actually, if you see the back, this one has the lips on it. It's the French kiss. Um, it's uh, um, it's just a regular kiss. I just want to point that. Has the lips on it. It's the French. Kiss. Okay, you see right. though. Right. <laughs> uh, this is an MG, M MGP uh, Armagnac cash. The mash bill again is um, fifty one corn. 45 wheat, 4% malted barley. Um, and so this is, I don't know, what do you guys think? 4% malted barley. And the, good? Yeah, yeah these so are, these limited amount of cases because it just, everything that got yielded, and we hand-bottled this uh, earlier this week. Yeah. So down at the warehouse, was it this week or last week? This week because it was April. Yeah, Tuesday um, in there, uh just putting it this into the it. bottles to make sure that we had an accurate count before they sent the labels out. And that's why we have the sample. We'll prove it. We just got the paper. label approvals today. These aren't quite, these are, these are actually them. I had to switch them because we had a couple little changes, but yeah. Um, but you can see, we just wanted it to have just a little bit of that Armagnac. It's by no means overpowering. I think it gives a little bit of enhancement to the, to, to the weeded bourbon, but again, not, not, not an overpowering flavor profile. Ooh la la. Randall, what color is that blue? Uh, Sacre blue. Sacre blue? Yeah. I thought it was cordon blue. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Do you guys like this one? Yeah. All right. So the next one, I don't know. I, I can't tell you if Randall and I had this really stupid idea. We have a lot of stupid ideas. Right. And occasionally we act on them. And it was, we've been talking about, for those of you who follow along on online and stuff, we've been talking about, you know, uh, Moxie and Rye. As Old a drink. The, as a drink. Some people love it. Some people hate it. Yeah. Well, they're wrong. The people who hate it are wrong. You are correct. And um, it's one of my, sort of my favorite, like, sort of cocktails is just Moxie and Rye. It's very New England. You know, uh, for those of you who don't know, and then somebody described it, I think the best way. My friend John described it the best way as basically a moxie is a carbonated amaro. Probably the best way to put it. Right? Sure. Um, sure. What does it taste of? Battery acid and? Of deliciousness. <laughs> and if you ever wanted to know what moxie tastes like, it's upstairs in the cabinet. We have it. We're both big fans. It does have a slightly uh, more towards the bitter or like kind of an edge to it, which is thirst quenching. But. It isn't sickly sweet like a lot of the American it's in, it's sodas. In the, it's or in the sarsaparilla, root beer, birch beer soda category. With the darker edge to it, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> the dark side yes. of of soda. So, um, how, basically, how we went about this is we took a thirty gallon barrel that held rye from Catoctin Creek, and we first took about five cases of Moxie and degassed it. Uh, by putting it in a carboy and letting letting it basically go flat, then it was put into the barrel, and then the barrel was let sit and and rotated, and let the coated the barrel with the, barrel. the uh, actual decarbonated soda. Soda. So for four months, 
at the coat of the barrel huh? with the uh, actual decarbonated What's that? soda. So for four months. And cooked the soda. We did some cooking of the soda. Huh? Yep, well, fine. Looks Which the is, same. Looks the same. Inside. Barrel looks the same. But, but, but inside. <laughs> So then we dumped that out, and then what John's uh, alluding to is that I then took it and reduced it down to a syrup. So in the future, if you purchase this, there may be a little special something that comes with it for yeah, some, some of the syrup, bottles. Some tinctures. But um, because we were trying to allude to the fact that um, bitters and cocktail making was kind of the root of what this was, yeah. and so we took the leftover decarbonated, now bourbon barrel, uh, barrel aged uh right. soda rye barrel aged soda and now have um that barrel ready to receive what was a 2015 mgp rye that was delicious again on its own yeah, without really any kind of influence and that sat there for several months until we deemed that it was ready to be put into the bottle and at the same time that we bottled the um Armagnac, we did the moxie and also got about 20 cases, roughly. Yeah, just roughly. Six pack cases. Almost. So and this so, one, so this was called Roxy. Roxy. The Rye Moxie Roxy. Six pack cases. So this, so, so this was called Roxy. Roxy. The Rye Moxie Roxy. You could take that reduction and put it in the soda stream. Yeah, absolutely. And make Moxie back. Well, barrel aged Moxie. So this is okay. all rye, but you start to see that moxie towards the tail well, end. Let me of the ask you a question now. Okay. Now, I know most of you said, like, that's insane. This is not going to taste good now, I know at all. You said, like, did, did you guys like it? This is not going to taste good. A lot better. So that was a New England compliment in case you missed it. Right. A lot better than I expected is the New England totally classroom. Yeah, it yeah. didn't totally suck. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, Rick. Thank you very much. Yes, it is. It is like a cocktail almost ready to die. And the the you know, again, another New England one. It's not bad. Because only in New England we use a negative for a positive compliment. Only in New England we use uh, we got like about 20 about cases out of this. 120 bottles, yeah. yeah. That's now, it. I'd have to look at the actual, it might be 19 on this yeah. and a little bit more on the on the weeded, but in that ballpark. And um, for these, we went out and, you know, twisted some arms. And if you've ever seen the copper and cast labels, the French kiss will come out with a light blue label and the moxie will come up with an orange label as an homage to the moxie can itself. But um, this was uh, quite the controversy at the company who did not want to have, you know, all sorts of colors all over the shelf, which we don't fully understand. But now, I don't um, know if much of this is going to hit the shelf. Special limited everywhere. edition bottle, uh, orange and blue with the different layers. This one will be also a whole card item. And then on the back of this, while it's not a direct copy of the Moxie label, um, you can see it says Roxy. It's an homage to Moxie. But yeah, because there's sort of copyright or um, trademark things it yeah says Roxy. it's an homage to Moxie. but yeah because there's certain we have not but we expect the lawyers to contact us any day now yeah initially our, our thought was to try and get syrup almost like you see in the movie theater things that yeah. load up the syrup and this is a product that is now currently owned by coca-cola yeah. so we thought we might be able to get it but it is in such limited supply and never seen in movie theater type things so they did not have a syrup that we could not use that we could get readily anyways. So we went with the so we went, carbonated soda. We have bath. film of us filling carboy with five cases of moxie. It's yes, pretty interesting. So well, five. I don't know. It was a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot. The and I know that fisting them, chugging them in. It was it was crazy. Did anyone cash in on those? Like that must have been like. Oh no, we have the cans. We still have the cans. cans. Yeah, oh, okay. we have. We still have the cans. So do you guys like it though? Yeah. Yeah, it's very different, right? Have you ever had a soda finished whiskey before? Yeah, have now, right? And there is, and just to give you a little hint of a sneak preview of something else that we're kind of cooking uh, around <laughs> is um, using a bourbon barrel that's had dry roasted coffee beans, French roast. Yeah. Uh, that will then have the remainder of the rye plus a 2016 rye from MGP 
plus possibly a 20-year uh, Canadian Canadian ride to top off the barrel for a coffee-influenced, it's not going to be coffee-flavored, but coffee-influenced ride for the next and probably final project from my my work with them. So, yeah. yeah. So we're working on that one. We just get the barrel back from we just get the barrel back from the roast from the roasters. So that keep an eye out. Just get the barrel back. We did a wake up juice, but this was going to be more. This we we want to do this more, more intense, more intense. We have a couple ideas of how we want to do this. Most of them involve heavy lifting, science, and um, minor destruction. So working on that. Yes. Heavy lifting, science, and um, minor destruction. Yes, the, is the ninety five five. It is, right. and um, in in a weird anomaly, it's actually a batch yeah. of it's four right. barrels that were on a lower scale and right. kind of very um all the same each mash one of them bill, very different so i took the same mash bill same distill date batched them together and then put them back in the barrels so it is a single barrel of a batch if you can wrap your head around that and then that went into partially fill the smaller size barrel that we did the the rock much like in. moxie it's a misunderstood monster yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so I hope you guys like that one. Yeah. Anyways. All right. So up next, up next, um, for those who have not tried, we're going to stick with the rye theme right now. And we're doing um, the Doc Ots, as it's said in New England. Uh, Macaulay Milton um, Minton is a friend of ours. He let us out to have carte blanche. I think a lot of you have probably heard the story already. Uh, this is a micro batch. This is two barrels uh, put together. Um, it's not, it's not, technically a blend this is a, a true batch but we took one barrel that was uh the seven year a seven-year-old rye in white port and another barrel which was a seven-year-old rye in red port and we mixed them equal parts together to come up with portal dark arts portal rye rye whiskey with two types of barrel finishes and a micro batch meaning that we've mixed those two together right so the smallest batch you can have is is two. Right. There's no definition. We made a definition of micro batch. We've been micro batching for about I don't know 10, 10 15 over 10, 10 years. Over 10 years. Proper dosing, yes. It was such a big such a big flavorful deep flavorful whiskey. Um, I should have told you guys the Moxie, by the way, was um, I think they have it. On, I think they put it on here. Fifty nine point nine. So almost on the 120 Roxy. proof. Almost, and it's an eight year old. Ends up being eight years old. The um, the Dark Arts is a seven year old. Like I said, this is one eleven point three six um, cast strength liquid gold. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Macaulay. Um, We've been we've had quite a, a few articles already written on on what we're doing with with Macaulay. Um, he just had a review done in uh, Whiskey Advocate today. It popped up today, Whiskey Advocate online for his um, blunt blend. Um, and to quote Macaulay, this is not my quote. He says, "I don't smoke cigars. I smoke blunts. What am I going to drink if I if I don't have a cigar blend?" And he created a rye blend. That's Four. that goes with blunts. Yes. So uh, that's a whole card item too, because he's only, it didn't. And now it's got, everybody's going to want it because it's because it's, the article came out. And it's going to be out. kind of crazily sought out. It, it was done in a small quantity too. Yeah. But the, that's different from the portal. And uh, the last couple ones, I think we had a tremendous uh, input or influence on how the flavor tasted and how it came out. Uh, did people have any comments or questions about the Dark Arts Portal Red and White Port Finish Rye? Uh, Thumbs up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So this, uh, this, just so you guys know, he just, he was just down. Um, this actually went to San Francisco, so we're waiting to hear back on this. Um, the other one, which Spirits is competition, Spirits yeah. competition, Arm and Oak went there, and so did um, uh, more. Our Compass Box is also went to San Francisco, so let's see how they do. Yep. Um, but he was uh, Macaulay was just down at the um, uh, the Louisiana the New Orleans Bourbon Festival, and he sent me back a list of how he scored. He had 
out of like I would say probably six categories, seven categories. About was, twenty whiskeys that got named. He had he had like four or five four of them five in of them, the yeah. top, like either one or two. Yeah. So I mean, this is his first time basically going out and showing off what he got. And I said you would have won if you'd taken ours. It's, 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 you would have won every category. But I really, I mean, this is just something totally different. It's totally new. These are under a hundred dollars. The, 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 this is this is micro batching blending and stuff like that is 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 sort of the future of where we're going and not mentioned here is a bourbon that is called arm and oak, and oak. which is armagnac and a uh french oak yeah finish. Uh, finish on bourbon so two barrels one french oak one armagnac equal parts together no, I don't. But we get we get a special deal on on this tonight too. I'll go through all the pricing. Yeah. Um. Afterwards. So keeping with the port theme. Yeah. But leaving rye whiskey. I figured we do the Cavalon. So, Cavalon is back doing barrels in the United States. They've been away for a while from doing barrels. They've been pulled back. And they meaning just, a single barrel release. The single yeah. barrel releases. They decided to come back into the U.S. market with only twelve barrels for the entire u.s so um i've been doing stuff with cavalon since they started coming into the u.s they said you get you get your choice of a barrel uh they sent me the samples and i go wow they're really great and this is the one i chose which is the the port finish and i also liked um they had a vino barrique that i thought was really good yeah very yeah. different Flavors. Very different flavors. Right. Um, I still say this port's better, but everybody likes Vino Barrique. I get it. Um, but um, so I started talking to them and I said, listen, I said, I really like these two barrels, but I can't take two barrels because they're I mean, they're over they're over two hundred dollars bottle and the Vino Barrique is two fifty. This is two hundred. So I said, but I would like to bring them in. I want Massachusetts to have it. I said, if I gave up my barrel, could could we do something with independent retailers in Massachusetts. They said, sure, we'll do that. So we basically put the two barrels into shares and in only independent stores in Massachusetts could get a share of these barrels. So instead of being under lock and key moniker or anything like that, it's the unholy alliance of independent retailers. Right. So, no, total one did. Why are you swearing at my store? Anyways, so um, these got divided up. We got, you know, everybody got their shares of what they what they wanted, and um, so the so Massachusetts is very fortunate in the fact that there's 12 barrels coming into the United States, and Massachusetts has two. So this is the port finish. This is a nine year old. Check my notes. Only 180, 167 bottles produced out of this. Um, this is a nine-year-old, 59.4% ABV. This is $200 a bottle. Um, everybody knows that's on par or actually on the lower end of Cavalon for uh, single barrel releases. Try this one and see what you think. This is such a big, such a big. One of the other reasons it made the list. There was a, a big earthquake there yesterday. Seven point five was it? Seven point nine. It was only. It wasn't. It wasn't very far from Cavalon. So, so far I've heard they're okay. And but it's scary. Um. Now, because of the the um this is one eleven the climate in Taiwan ages differently than it does here. Nine years old is super old for a whiskey and coming out of Taiwan. Most of them are like between five and six, if you're lucky. It is one of the hottest, most humid places I've ever been on Earth. Um, you sure it's okay after that? Yeah, well, um, there's a whole story with uh, me being banned from Japanese school children. Because inadvertently, I was wearing an outfit that looked remarkably similar to what their school <laughs> uniform was. And they were horrified when I came around the corner and met a group of them sweating profusely, towel around my neck. And by the way, their uniform is uh, its a navy polo shirt with either uh, 
Khaki baby sweat. blue um, kind shorts. of shorts or pant uh, or a skirt, which is why I had the shorts. And then they wear knee high socks, the girls, and I was wearing compression socks because of the heat and stuff, which looked uh, pretty close to exactly what they were wearing. And they were horrified, terrified, I would even say. Needless to say, I have to make the next trip to Taiwan by myself. Yeah. So what do you guys think of this? It's really good, right? Yeah. I mean, just the, the amount of flavor. If you add it like a, a, just a drop of water to this, I mean, just all the flavors that just pop on this are unbelievable. Just add like a, just a drop of water to this. And I, I would say that I think we're seeing really in the last year or so the rise of a lot of Armagnac finish. And I think that's a fantastic set of flavors that you can get from the Armagnac casks. But I have always uh, had like a, a spot for port finish because a good finish with port whether it be tawny port or your typical other ports uh just really adds like a, a nice kind of darker um yeah. leather note uh, yeah. element to it tobacco leaf element that i just find delightful so i hope you enjoy this as well so. i will i will tell you that um the the new whiskey coming out and it's moving along very nicely out of uh old elk that's going to be coming out, which is a blend of straight whiskeys because it doesn't fall into any category, which is going to be a new new thing to teach everybody. It doesn't have to be bourbon or rye. We just put stuff together. One of the components to that is a wheat whiskey done in tawny port. So that's one of the components uh, to that. So that that should be coming out uh, soon. Some of you have got to try it. Anybody with Mel did the um, seminar with Mel? Get to start to try it, but um, that's going to be coming out shortly, hopefully. Um, all right, so that's the lineup of available soon to be. Um, so I thought I, uh, for for the last whiskey tonight, um, have a drink of water before you have this because um, you just had that cabal on. Have a drink of water before you have this, obviously. But um, – so everybody asks me, what is your favorite whiskey? And I, my answer is always the one I'm drinking. Because it really depends on my mood of what I what I like to have, what how I'm feeling that day, what it's like outside. Has it been outside today? Um, I probably have a peated whiskey. Sorry, Frank. But, um, but you know, depending on that, and, you know, people go, well, I got like five bottles open. I go, oh, that's a start. Um, I like... When you get up to about a hundred, let me know because now you're now you're cooking with gas because now you're sort of picking and choosing what you really want to drink and how it fits your mood. But one whiskey, one whiskey is if somebody said you could only have one, that's it. You're 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 now done. You only have one whiskey. So I said, but the Florifauna series from Diageo. This happens to be the this especially this one is the Mortlock 16 from the Flora Fauna series is a really hard one to get. I was fortunate enough to have enough friends that got me a couple of these um, so I could have them in my collection. I don't open them up a lot because I know it's a finite amount that I have. Um, this was a brand new bottle. Thank, thanks a lot. You little piggies. We're almost out. So I got, I got, I got enough, I got enough for me to drink on my birthday. I think I'm, I'm I won't feel bad. Um, but, um, so the dad, there's a, there's a, a wood duck on the front of this. You'd be happy to know there's a wood duck on the front of the Flora Fauna series. This is one of my just like favorite of all time whiskeys. Yeah. And, uh, when I was kind of coming up through the Scottish system, the Flora and Fauna edition was distilleries that were not readily available that they packaged to bring to select consumers, limited edition so you had brands like mortlock or linkwood or um don't want it pity vague or some of the other ones that were not commercially available and so when people tasted and we had tasted the mortlock from that edition we're like how can we get more of this and the answer is you can't and then years later they will release it as an edition with the kind of special architectural bottle and all that other stuff that came out which we're excited about, but it does not really kind of um, harken the new, the back. The newer one now, the newer ones now, 
they 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 came back and they brought what Randall Randall's talking about. They came back and they ruined Mortlock for me. I was like, what are you doing? It just they changed. It was still good, but it was it wasn't, different. It wasn't. It was. But different. this is the 16 year old edition of the Mortlock, very reminiscent of those uh, early floor and fauna bottles, even in the packaging. So um, it was a big fan well, favorite this, back this then. It. Yeah, this is okay. the real one. All right. Yeah, I get that. These these were hard to get. These are the floral faunas. Labels peeling off. I can see the scotch tape. This is a counterfeit bottle, folks. No, no. I have to. I have to take it home and and, and investigate just, further. Yeah, we'll have to research this much more. Now, I will tell you. So, our new uh, the the fifty fiftieth uh, anniversary edition of what we just did with Compass Box, which is called More. There is a lot of twenty one year old Mortlock in there for a very specific reason. I like Mortlock. Yeah. So, so this that is may the 50th be my anniversary new... of the store, Julio. Yes, that you may be my new favorite. Yeah, yeah, that may be my new favorite. This is my old favorite. That may be my new favorite. So, um, but it, they both have, they, you know, this is a 16 year old. So, thank you for all coming and drinking my whiskey. I hope you had a good time tonight. Thank you. And we'll we'll continue to take questions and stuff, yeah. but we want to make sure, folks. Terrified, I would even say. What is it? 680. That's that's a bargain. What do you guys think there we go. Get me those. <laughs> really I'll take more. You guys have greedy yeah. little piggies. You've drunk it all. All right. Well, that's my special edition. Uh, stay with. Stay here. I got. I get some stuff to go over with you guys. Stay here. We're gonna let everybody go on Facebook. Thank you. You should have been here. It was really cool. Uh, yeah. But thanks everybody. You can also watch this. Uh, it's the liquor talking on um, wherever you get your podcasts. So go there.